We just made it to a beautiful outdoor spot in nature here. After being in cities for so long, we needed some outdoor time. We're at Juntas River, which is an extension of Los Navados National Park. No cell signal and a free wild campsite is always the perfect option for me. So before we left Bogota, we were able to meet another van lifer. He's been traveling the same route as us from the US down to Argentina in a beautiful Volkswagen van. After coming back from the Pacific Northwest, it's really cool to see someone from Oregon staying right next to us. Danny is trading the van. <laughs> Just kidding. He was in Bogota for a long time, so he was able to show us some of his favorite places to eat and get some drinks. So the last thing that we did before we left Bogota was get our beautiful new map framed. And tonight we're finally gonna be able to hang up our art on these bare walls, get them nice and looking lived in again. <laughs> Oh man, I got the drone caught up in a tree. You can see the light on it. It's like gonna be hard to get up there. It's practically a cliff. So there's the van. And up here, you can just see the light barely blinking up there. Danny's trying to climb up to get the drone. It's, I think it's gonna be pretty hard. Trying to night hike out here up this hill and see if I can find the drone. It's thick and it's a cliff. Ooh, it's not looking good. Man, and it looks like the drone battery died. If I can get some sort of a mode that helps me figure out how to get to it. Just show me on the screen. One point settings, okay. Set it where I am. Weak mobile device GPS signal. So, okay, holding it up here. Just have to keep going up. And shut this off for now. Maybe the battery does better. <sighs> wow, this is terrifying. There's a cliff below me. I think this way is not going to be passable. I was trying to cut that way because I think that's where the drone is. This is one of those trees that cuts you. Oh, I wish I could find this drone, but I think I'm going to have to turn back because this is just getting past the limit of sanity. I don't think I'm above the cliff. But my light is dimmed because it's starting to die. Just came out down here, found Emily. <laughs> Thanks for telling me where you were. Yeah, you. Yeah, I saw your light and I was like, oh my god, there you is. Because I didn't see you for a really long time. I guess it was really thick in there. Yeah. So I was getting really nervous. And I was just walking up and down this road. What was my progress to? Could you tell how close I was to where the drone should have been? Uh huh. Was I past it? I was way over there. And where should I have been? Over there. Oh my god. Yeah, because there's like a bunch of cliffs up here. The, the scariest part was where I was above a cliff. You know? Jeez. Because I had to cut this way and then cut back across it. Mm. And you can't really tell like how far down does the cliff start, you know? It looks like it starts right there. I just started kind of shaking a little bit because I thought there's like not even much to hold on to. Oh my God. And if I slip, like that's it, you know? So Yeah. But then there was this big tree and there was enough stuff there that I just I was like, I have to take a break because like if your muscles go that's why, like yeah. that, you know, you're gonna mess up. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna sit here in this super scary spot and put my feet against this tree. Then the scariest part is I would shut off my light there because I wanted to see if I could see the drone lights. I was like holding on and I'd shut the light off and I'd start going like this while the light's off, like, you know, like losing your balance. It's like, oh my God. It's so dark out and there. And I thought like, I know it's probably that way, but this is getting like so steep and cliffy and it's just dark and I can't see I'm so it. glad that you came down. What, the way you're describing it now, I'm kind of thinking just to abandon it because that is a scary story, babe. The guy said he didn't think that you would be able to get it. I know, it's really sad. But what if I get close to it and then I could just shake that tree or something and it falls down? But did you even see a way that you could have cut more left? Mm, it was just too hard at night. The light was, was dying too. 
I saw the light flash. You saw that's when it starts dying. I was like freaking the f out, babe. If you would have seen me down here, I don't really want you to go tomorrow. I have to try. So I'm gonna try and distract Danny from losing this drone, and we're gonna go in for a walk up the canyon a ways. It doesn't look like it's in a great spot up there. Well, it's been a nice hike and scouting mission here. Beautiful river, valley. Whoa. Man, it's raining. and I think I'm gonna have to wait till tomorrow. All right, we got day three drone hunt, trying to head up this crack here. Hoping that helps me avoid uh, bushwhacking and put these gloves on and well, you know how this goes. I get to start in on some bushwhacking up here, but it looks almost like a trail I found. Fingers crossed I get to some open area up top and I can just traverse, we'll see. Open terrain. I don't know how much I wanna go that way. I think it's really this way. So I think I'm gonna come up along the edge of this field, and try and cut left again. I see these power lines, I know I gotta go up around the hill and come down where the power lines are. So it looks like there's these side trails from the field that go to this ravine. I'm trying to see if this will take me to the part of the jungle I need to go. There's a spider web. So this doesn't look like this trail continues anywhere. So while Danny's up there on his drone expedition, Sambrita and I went to the river and got a little bath. I usually don't get baths in the river. That's not usually a thing <laughs> for me. I just don't really go in rivers that much, but after seeing so many van lifers do it and have such a great time, and I really don't know when the next one we're gonna get is. So it's kind of nice to freshen up in the river. Emily. Hey, good luck. You gave some Brita a bath? Yeah, somebody did my birthday. <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna need a bath after this. Love you, babe. I better find this drone. Oh man, things are not going too well. Uh, the walkie-talkie died. I thought I put it in the bag, but somehow I left it in my pocket and it must have died. I'm out here on my own. Just gonna have to keep going and hope I see those power lines over here. I'm fine. Hope she knows I'm fine. Despite the lack of being able to tell, I think I'm making progress. There's the town. I brought some water at least. <laughs> wow. Right under the power lines, this should be the drone zone. Gotta try to figure out what that tree is in the picture. I wish I would have brought some more batteries, but I was able to tell Emily to walk up the road and, and she'll be able to see me in a minute and at least gesture, hopefully, which, which way I am, which way I need to go. So I'm just kind of waiting until I see her down there. Uh, that was the most frustrating thing, trying to communicate with her. My walkie keeps dying after I say one word. She pointed this way, so I think we gotta go down to the right Ugh. every 10 feet takes probably five minutes pushing through this maybe longer plus the doubting the second guessing if I'm going the right way it's already 240 Oof. there's Emily over there I had charged the walkie-talkies so you could bring it up a walkie-talkie and I could have a walkie-talkie and there's an extra battery and I told him to bring an extra battery with him I'm not sure what to do at this point. Emily says I'm above the cliff, so that opening right there, you can see it gets pretty open right over here. The big steep cliff. Avoid all these cliffs, and I think this drone is unrecoverable, unfortunately, but I tried my best. You know, you saw me out here. <laughs> so that's where I was coming from. And looks like I've made it back to this ravine here. So I think that would mean the drone is down here. But that is steep, cliffy territory. A branch stuck me. Yeah. Definitely a lot of spiders. <laughs> and Emily got in touch, said, uh, I'm very close to it. It is crazy steep. I don't, I don't even think I can explore this area. This is, so uh, taking breaks whenever I can, looking around. Oh man, if I get back there, I'm probably just gonna head out. This is gnarly. Don't see any drone, that's for sure. Okay, night's falling. 
I have to put on my headlight. Wow, as luck would have it, I found the ravine. I basically made it. I got this. Oh, almost back, there's the town. Let's see if I can get this open. That lock is not locked. Oh my God, how surreal to be back on a road. Almost back to Emily. Was that like six hours? Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. oh wow, I'm so hey, I missed you guys. Like the craziest thing I've ever done. Yeah. And I came back empty handed. Yeah. Oh. I'm sorry. Well I'm glad you're okay and I'm glad you're back. Well, we're abandoning the drone here, but definitely not without trying. We're heading to Valle de Cocora today to do a nice on-trail hike. <laughs> Little bit muddy. We are hiking up to the Casa Colibri, which is the hummingbird house. After we go to the hummingbird house, we're going to pass through the wax palm forest, which I'm super stoked about. We started over here at this little casita. And you can see where we end, over there. That is where a whole bunch of people are lined up. They're probably just gonna go to the Wax Palm Forest, which is closer to the other side. But that's where we're gonna end our hike. This area has a huge concentration of hummingbirds. We already saw a couple of really cool birds on our way here, but going to the, the hummingbird house is gonna be really, really cool. None of them are in cages but they have a whole bunch of sugar water and nectar and different kinds of plants near the house so that we can see the hummingbirds up close. Hopefully we can see some hummingbirds. It should be about six and a half miles, a little bit over six and a half miles. And some burritos allowed to go, which we're pretty excited about. On our way in, it's 5,000 pesos a person. 5,000 pesos is about $1.25. And then in our way out, it's gonna be another 6,000 pesos, which, you know, $1.50. All in all, the hike's only three bucks, which I don't really mind paying to the local community and the finca that we're walking through. So much for that bath, we just took some brita. It's all right. <laughs> so the wax palms are the tallest palm trees in the world. So crazy we were able to come and see them. Palm trees aren't actually even trees and they're just enormous plants. So pretty wild. <laughs> I had no idea. Even after cutting down all those coconuts and you know sleeping under palm trees for a year, I had no idea that they're not actually trees and they're just huge plants. That looks like a little nicer trail, hopefully. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Never mind. This bridge is looking even sketchier. Let's see, wow, some brick is good. So I was just walking down the trail a little bit. We were on our, we checked the map and then we were gonna be on our way and a tree just broke right above us. But it was a tree falling towards me so we both ran towards the river. Oh my god, that was so scary. Yeah, so Rita thought it was fireworks. She was freaking out. Well, she's still freaking out. I thought it was fireworks too. That was pretty loud and, and we're kind of right below it right now. Either way, I want to get out of here. <laughs> get the... Sombrita is very happy. She made a dog friend. Look at that doggy smile. Oh 
Oh man, I didn't want to do any bushwhacking today. But it looks pretty benign. Okay, and now they're saying they want 15,000 a person. Thanks to Overlander, we have that history of what the price was. This was supposed to be 5,000 a person. Hopefully they still got the hot drinks even if it's not included. I'll definitely purchase one. Denny, when did you wear this jacket last? Yeah, last time I wore this I think was it Mount Spokane. We got Schweitzer here. We got the Mount Spokane. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit different environment to be wearing this coat. <laughs> Took out the inside. Yeah. yeah, so it's just a rain jacket. It's just funny, like wearing the same coat in such a different place, different time. Tall. Look how tall they are. Just absolutely insane. What a beautiful hike this has been. Tons of birds around. Yeah, some parakeets. Yeah. This spot is called the Mirador 2. And you don't have to do all the rest of the hike if you want to just start from the city and come up to here. Because right now we're just right in the middle of all these palms. It's really cool. The tallest palm trees in the world. What an amazing experience. Big strong point of this is that there's not that many people around right now. We kind of wish we had started earlier, but yeah, this is a very touristy area, but it's definitely got a charm. I think it's worth the tourists. It's worth the hike, for sure. to play with this girl. We decided to come check out the town of Salento today. It's been really cute. A bunch of nice shops and pretty stores and storefronts, plaza. <laughs> and now we're heading up to the mirror door, which is a bit of a climb after yesterday. Let's see how the view is up here. Well, Salento was a super cute little town. 
Well, we're gonna make our way over to a little overlander oasis in fin Finlandia. But tonight they're gonna have a bonfire, which sounds really nice. So we'll see you guys next time.